Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two of this welding cart project, uh, open concept design where there's not a lot of bracing here so that I can get things in and out really easily. Now I mentioned uh, earlier that I may have to put a gusset or two on this thing. I'm just going to go ahead and, and build it to this point and see how flexy, spongy it is. Uh, so let's check that out right now. The welder I'm going to put on this cart weighs less than 50 pounds. Let's see how much this thing flexes when I get up on it. I think it'll be okay. I am going to make a couple of changes here though. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a support, one upright support right here. And the reason is there's a bottle going behind here anyway. I'm not going to be able to reach in from behind. So once one single support, Tying this into the bottom piece uh, will add a lot of rigidity to this thing. And then uh, also, I may have to move some things around just a little bit because where the cable, where the power cable goes out of the back of the welder is kind of uh, right where this cross piece is here. Didn't think of that. So I might just cut it, drop it, and call it good. Sometimes you can cut welds like this off with a porta band but I'm using a four and a half inch grinder today getting it almost all the way off and then separating it with a chisel Then I'll grind all the old weld off and put a new piece back in there and get that one tacked and fit up straight and weld it in bump it around a little bit make sure I've got it clocked right using a straight edge from the other the other member and we'll get it tacked and welded and carry on. Now I'm shopping around right now for a chop saw that uses a carbide tip blade, not the abrasive blade, but I don't have one right now so I'm cutting with a, a porta band on a stand so it helps me to have two marks and this little wide base square will let you transfer a silver pencil mark down onto the piece and that's really all I need for the band saw it walks on me and I need to kind of keep an eye on it when I cut it. In fact, you could you could transfer the mark on all all four sides if you wanted to pretty easily with this or you could just use a wrap around. If you haven't heard of what a wrap around is, it's something pipe fitters use to wrap around pipe to get a square cut. So now I'm laying out where this piece goes on the bottom and I like to make my marks on the outside of the tubing about an eighth of an inch wider than the tubing so that one of the marks isn't hidden. I make sure know where you know know that I'm centered up. So we'll get that one tacked in and welded up. I'm just cutting some three quarter inch cold rolled angle, and these are going to be runners for the decking. I'm going to use aluminum tread plate for the decking and pony clamps come in super handy for stuff like this doesn't doesn't require a whole lot of pressure to hold a light piece of angle and they're very easy to use one-handed and that's really all I need so I'm I am popping these things in there with a, a nice hot machine I've got the machine set to about 145 amps a good uh, probably a good 30 amps hotter than I would weld something like this but it just makes a really super quick tack and I'm going to put several tacks like this, and that's probably all I'm going to do. I'll probably weld the end, the very ends, kind of just do a little fusion pass on the very ends of them. And then the rest of it will be held in by really strong, hot tack welds, lots of them. That's why I like torch switches like this. I'm walking around the table here, and I'm just using an on-off thing, no, no down slope, no up slope. And to drag a foot pedal around the table for this particular part of the operation just takes time. So it's just a way to speed things up having a torch switch. I don't like to always weld with a torch switch, but uh, on this particular cart, on a lot of this stuff, I did just use the switch. And I would set the, I would set the heat as, as close as I, as I could and then just use about a one second down slope to prevent little crater holes. Super fast, super handy.
This is a little miter gauge that I got with my swag off-road portaband stand and I'm going to make a couple little pie cuts experimenting here for some handles for this cart. So instead of cutting one cut at 45 degrees, I'm, I'm making two cuts at 22 and a half degrees and because I'm doing that I got to make sure it's clocked right so I just use that piece that's already got the 22 and a half on it and I kind of lining it up and clamping that down making that cut and it seemed to you know, seem to be a good plan anyway <laughs> after it's all cleaned up ready to weld these things up got a couple of solid copper third hands there that someone sent me and I lost the email of the guy that sent them to me so I don't have any idea but if you're watching thanks again these things are awesome those things lined up and get some quick tig tacks on them still using the torch switch and here I'm, I'm I've set it down to probably only about 85 amps because I want some really small tacks on here I'm using 045 wire that's about just a little bit over one millimeter diameter wire and you might ask about the Pyrex cup the only reason I'm using the Pyrex cup for this stuff is because, is because it makes it a little bit easier to film uh, it kind of illuminates the work area because it's clear so I get light from up inside the cup and uh, that's really that's really it I haven't really noticed any huge benefits on a small Pyrex cup or a straight up gas lens other than that and being able to see through them if you're down in a tight spot. We'll flip this thing around, clamp it down, make sure we don't lose the flatness of it and get a couple more tacks, 180 degrees where I got the first ones. Sit ups are pretty decent. No big gaps or anything. One of the handiest things you can have for, for positioning small parts is just a small drill vise like this, a drill press vise, and uh, you can get them really cheap and they don't have to be good ones either. They don't have to be really super accurate or have great jaws or anything like that. You can pick them up at Harbor Freight, Home Depot, any of those kind of places. I've got a couple of them and they all work just fine. Great for holding small parts and being able to reposition them fairly quickly while you get tax on them or even hold them while you weld them. Again, I'm using about 85 to 90 amps here with the torch switch and about one amp, I mean, I'm sorry, one second of downslope. Downslope is just sort of taking the place of letting off of the foot pedal. And about one second is all it takes on this stuff to prevent a crater hole. Two seconds would be fine, just slows it down a little bit. And one, second, one second seemed to, to work out just fine for me. Now these are going to be brackets to hold the gas cylinder in the back. These are just like the ones I made on the previous cart I built, and they worked out so well that I'm doing it again. Now I've got a I've got a press brake kit that I'm going to get out pretty soon. It's got finger finger uh, blades on it so that I can break up boxes and things like that. But honestly, sometimes it's just quicker to cut and weld and get a perfect 90 than it is to break it. If you had a lot of them to do, it would save time to 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 put brakes in here instead of weld. But these are these are brackets. V, they have a V in them so that they'll cradle the gas cylinder in the back. And I'll weld these onto the back. And uh, I'll chain the gas cylinder to the cart. This is a, a picture of what the previous cart looks like on that particular part. And I even put an eye bolt in there. And I'm, I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, it's just as easy to loop the chain right through the opening. Again, I'm just getting a, a tack or two here and there on this thing, and before I weld it out, I'll get a few more tacks. And so let's weld them out now. I've mentioned this many times, but having spare or scrap aluminum blocks like this for backing and for chilled blocks is super handy. I, I save all the big chunks of aluminum like this I can get my hands on. Especially for outside corner joints like this, it's almost as good as having... But it's actually better than having argon backing because also it provides chill, pulls the heat out, prevents pieces from distorting, just makes them weld a lot better. I'm probably about 105 amps here using a 1 16th, that's 1.6 millimeter ER70S6 filler rod. 
just happened to be what I grabbed. No, no particular reason for the uh, for the ER70S6 as opposed to ER70S2. I'm trying to give you a few looks at this. I, again, that's the reason I use that Pyrex cup. It just seems seems to light up the area when I'm filming. I do occasionally use a larger. Uh, the Furic number 12 Pyrex cup if I'm welding stainless steel or something like that. But this is cold rolled carbon steel. Not really a lot of benefit to keeping the color uh, down on this. going to be painted anyway. All right, those are the brackets. Those are wrapped up now. Let's uh, talk about the casters. Now I'm going to use silicon bronze here to technically, I guess you'd call it TIG brazing, but you know, I'm going to TIG weld these casters on here. A lot of people will be like, well, why didn't you put mounting plates on there? Well, because silicon bronze grinds so easily, and if I ever need to change these, I can have that weld ground off and new casters welded on practically by the time I could unbolt and bolt. And uh, it's just like, it's going to be fine. I've done a lot of these carts for welders over the years, and, and uh, actually one's held up for 20 years without ever having to get uh, replace the casters. So to drill holes or tap holes and all that for this particular application just doesn't really make sense to me. All right, got the casters on. Time to level up the, the cart on the table here with some spacer plates. That's close enough. And the reason I'm leveling it up and the reason I waited till now to put the big wheels on because I didn't want to have to calculate and, you know, take out for the, the amount of space that the small casters took on. So I just put them on first and then level the table up and I'm cutting the axle out because that's where the gas cylinder goes right in there and I just left it in there to make sure it was an easy way to get them straight and that's that now we'll weld the the brackets on where the cylinder goes kind of get those centered up and a T-joint weld looks something like this where you're trying to flow that metal all the way into the root of the joint I've got quite a lot of torch angle there, but still working. And then welding the, the handles on that I made earlier will just about wrap it up. I left the threads on one end of those pieces, and I just put pipe caps on there. And that's where I intend to hang my cables, ground clamp and, and MIG gun cable. And all I've got to do is uh, cut some aluminum tread plate, paint it up real nice, and we'll show that in, uh, at some point here pretty soon. Hey, thanks for watching. My online store is at weldmonger.com if you'd like to support the efforts over here. Other than that, always glad to have you. I know you got other choices as far as welding channels go. I appreciate you spending time on my channel.